starting with the final resolution 2006 main event, which was Sting and Christian Cage facing the King of the Mountain, Jeff Jarrett, and the alpha male, Monty Brown. Yeah, nothing like a pay-per-view main event tag. I kind of like a pay-per-view main event tag. It has to be the, like, the debut of Sting, you can get away with doing a pay-per-view main event tag. Hmm. But, like, you can't just do it. If, if this was, like, Christian and Rhino against Jarrett and Monty, nah, terrible, you can't do it. Yeah. But because it's Sting, it is Sting. They get, they get a pass. You are a debut while returning Sting. We're pretending debuting. Yeah, it was funny. We mentioned this on the watch along at one point, but there's a video package on the pay-per-view where they show Sting's 2003 stuff. And like, they did not do that at all in the build-up because they're like, it's a debut, it's Sting, Sting is coming. And when, when they get to the pay-per-view, they'll be like, ah, we can admit he was here before now. You bought the pay-per-view. <laughs> you fools. They should know that no one watched that era anyway. Mm. So the December 17th impact opens with a recap of what happened at Turning Point. As you remember, after Jarrett beat Rhino in the main event, there was that tease. The, the JPEGs appeared and Sting's uh, was just the bat and the boots or something appeared on a chair in the middle of the ring and they looked shocked and flabbergasted. In kayfabe, did Sting put them there? That's a good question. Did he, like, lower them slowly down from the rafters? Balancing them precariously on a steel chair. Yeah, he had th- that's a lot to get done with the lights going out for, like, three seconds as well. That's quite impressive of Sting. Mm. Or did he just, like, hire a guy? <laughs> just to sneak into the ring? Yeah, he hired Christian Cage to do it. He's like, we're gonna team up. So, can you just do this for me, please? Yeah, we need you to slip out there. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting dilemma that we've come across. So, Jared kicks off this episode of Impact. He runs out to the ring. He Well, not to the ring, to the announce desk. Because who does he ask when he needs to find something out, Liam? It's always Mike Tanay. I unironically think that this might be the best thing that Jeff Jarrett does. Just anytime he needs to know something. He doesn't go to the director of authority, Larry Zabisco. Or the head of TNA management. I don't think he's technically DOA. But he doesn't go to Larry Z. He goes to Mike. Because he's like, Mike, you're in the know. Everybody always tells you everything. You're the intent interrogator or whatever that segment was called you should know all of these things exactly i don't know he just i think him and mike today have such good like chemistry together mm. today is like i don't know i know what you know i always know what you know why are you shouting at me <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, a reoccurring trend in Jeff Jarrett's segments this month that we'll talk about a lot. The crowd are chanting boring at him as he does his promo. He just, like, ignores him. <laughs> yeah, and, like, these people are so over this dude as champion. He's just, like, and he does the same thing, because it's always, like, TNA management, you want to bring in Sting? You, if you want a war, you got a war. It's conspiracy theory, take our spots. It's that same promo. He's been doing it for six months. He does it four times this month. Six months? <laughs> He's been doing it for four years. Yeah, and it's like, it's not even the case that you can be like, they're bored of him as champion, because, well, they are, but it's it's increasingly they're bored of him being the exact same person as champion every week. I think it is bored of him. Yeah, I think he's bored of him. But like, I don't, there, there can't be anything, he must be like, running purely on paranoia at this point. Mm. Like, they, like, he can't be getting any sort of creative fulfillment from this role. Yeah, I, I, that's the whole thing in the summer where like he was worried about his position of power in the company and that's the reason he wanted to keep the belt and he didn't want to drop the AJ and he was like, what if we drop the Monty this time? So like, I, I do think him being champion is just entirely about his political position in the company. Yeah, I don't know. Like, the, it, Yeah, it, it truly just has to be a running on fear, <laughs> the great motivator. So we got a little tease at the end of this uh, segment that you would think is a thing they should have followed through on to the end, but I guess they kind of didn't. But as Jared is leaving, after shouting at Mike Tanay, Samoa Joe enters for the opening match. They walk out, they beat eyes, they stare down, Jared kind of nervously eyes his own title as he looks in the eyes of Samoa Joe, and Joe goes on to do his match against Jay Lethal that we'll talk about when we get the exhibition stuff. But it's interesting that, like, here, they're they're teasing Samoa Joe, perhaps eyeing up more than the exhibition title. It was, it was honestly, like, very well done. For, like, you know, it's a little small segment, it's hard to fuck up, but I, I remember, like, even when I was watching it, I, like, stood up in my chair a little bit, you know what I mean? I was like, ooh! Yeah, it's the classic like Paul Heyman segments bleeding into each other kind of thing, where it's like Joe's coming out for the match as Jared is leaving, uh, to, and then to, to set up that tease, which is, is probably what they should have followed through on. Like, they ultimately pivot to Sting, which is understandable that Sting is the guy to kind of end Jared for good, but it should have been Joe. Yeah, but I don't know, maybe they... 
I, I, but I do find it hard to believe that they were like, even in this moment, like Joe's going to be the guy. Yeah, uh, they were probably just like, let's do a little thing. Let's lay a little seed. If not uh, for anything else, then to suggest that Joe is is, is like destined for bigger and better things. Yeah, in like it feels like you're putting him on a level. At least, yeah. even if you're not going to follow through with a program. Yeah, you're, you're just saying Joe is looking at that belt and he will be looking at that belt in the future. Also, it, it does put over Joe because it's like the world champion is fearful of this guy. Rightfully so. And it's like, I don't know, it's like weirdly uh, gracious of a Jeff Jarrett to do. <laughs> I was literally just thinking that, that, that was like, how did Jarrett not politic his way out of this segment? I don't, yeah, I don't know. Ah, uh, you know, we shouldn't be putting the X Division guy out there with the heavyweight guy. We shouldn't be we shouldn't be putting them on the same page, you know, it's a it's bad book and it makes me look bad. My guess is maybe like he knows he's not actually doing a program. Mm. So he's like, I'm not actually gonna have to put this guy over. There is no actual fear of him having to wrestle well he does wrestle him by September, but in the immediate future there is no fear of him having to wrestle Samoa Joe. Yeah. We had a couple of promos in that show because Jarrett's out again for the main event, but we get a couple of promos backstage. Franchise has Jarrett. He's talking about how he has to go to war and AMW will be by his side and he's recruiting again. Gail walks in. She's mad about the Jackie Gata stuff and Jarrett's like, it's not what it seems. Gail pushes Jarrett away and he gets mad. Because he's like, uh, uh, the, the, the tone of the Jarrett and Gail segments for this entire month are all like, listen, woman, you shouldn't be mad at me. And she's like, woman? Yeah. I don't get what the implication is about their relationship. Gail and Jarrett or Jackie and Jarrett? Gail and Jarrett. Yeah. Because, like, the way they frame it, like, it comes across as, like, weirdly personal. Mm. When, like, it feels like their on-screen relationship has always been one of, like, a professional relationship. Yeah, because, like, the story is, and I think they explain it this month, we'll probably get into it, but that, like... Jackie Gator was promised a spot in TNA, and Gail Kim was brought in instead. So the the Planet Jarrett spot was promised, quote unquote, to Jackie Gator, and they brought Gail in instead, and she's showing up to get what's hers. Like that's that's the story they're telling. But as as you said, it it, it, it there's a weird tension there that feels deeper than the manager of Planet Jarrett. Yeah, like. I don't know. Like, it, it, it comes across as weird, and then, like, ultimately, it doesn't really feel like it goes anywhere. Mm. <laughs> like, the the whole thing with Jarrett eventually just kind of transitions to Demore. Yeah. So it's like, I think they, like, maybe started this with an idea and then very quickly decided not to go in that direction. Because mm. later in the show, again, he's Jarrett is recruiting Diamonds in the Rough. They're with him, but Jarrett really wants Monty. He's like, where's Monty? I don't care about it. Like, it's nice to have you, Simon, but Mon- Monty's the guy I want around here. <laughs> uh, Gail, Gail confronts him again, and Jarrett is like, I don't have time for this. <laughs> and then it's like, you don't have three minutes to like tell her something mm-hmm. in the time where you're not finding Monty Brown. And then again, later in the show, Jared and Team Canada are backstage. Scott has talked to Monty and told him Jared wants to talk to him. Monty didn't seem happy about that, naturally, based on their entire hmm. relationship together. Um, Jared then asks Gail what's wrong. And she's like, not like you care. And she's petulantly painting her nails. <laughs> Cool. They also, this is the show where they air the Spike VGA's recap where um, AJ Styles is with Donald Faison and Mike Denae's like, you'll never believe who Jeff Jarrett bumped into. And it was Dwayne. It's so funny that there's like no follow up on that. I get it's like, it's a push to the VGA's, but there's not like, you would have thought they would have tried in everything in their power to shoot like a 20 second video with The Rock. <laughs> They probably did try. He probably told him to fuck off. Yeah, that's probably true. He's like, uh, you know, I can't do that. You know why I can't do that. But listen, I, I like what you guys are doing. You guys are doing great. Come on, Jeff. He was very, probably very nice and very diplomatic about the, uh, that, but like very sternly, no. He's like, I'll see you in 18 years for Ken Shamrock's induction. <laughs> So main event segment, Planet Jarrett is in the ring. Jarrett runs down all the recent talent signings. They've signed 3D, they've signed Rhino, they've signed Christian, and now Sting is coming too. So everything he said about the the new talent coming to take people's spots has come to pass. He is right, it is true, and everyone should join his side. He demands and gets a declaration of loyalty from Team Canada, from AMW, and from Abyss, and that leaves the alpha male Monty Brown. Monty is happy with Jarrett's fashion choices, which I think is dubious. He compliments Jarrett. He looks like shit. 
<laughs> yet. He did not look good. I, th- this is the most out of character moment of Monty Brown. That's when Monty you know he's turning heel. Complimenting Jeff Jarrett's choice of s- clothes is... When he is... put over a shitty Jeff Jarrett fit. Mm, which is all of them, frankly. Yeah, like, sometimes he has, like... But, like, like this is nothing. This is, like, actively awful. Mm, um, so, Monty is like, killer be killed, hunter be hunted. This is survival of the fittest. These are his three rules, which are, honestly, the same rule rephrased three different times. <laughs> yes. Monty should come up with more rules. Uh, he says he's all in. He shakes Jarrett's hand. Then the scorpion JPEG appears on the screen as Christian, Rhino, and Team 3D stand atop the ramp. Presumably forming the JPEG Mafia. Very good. Thank you. That joke is written into the show notes. And if you heard Liam do a little sigh there, I think it's because he read ahead and saw it written into the show notes before I said it. Then I remembered that you said it on the watch along. <laughs> yeah. Workshop and material. Yeah, you, gotta, you gotta take the material around the country first before you film the special. Mm-hmm. It's very important. December 24th, Impact. Christmas Eve. Santa Claus and his little helper come to the ring. <laughs> This is an incredibly horny segment. Mike Tanay, because Santa is played by Matt Bentley for some reason, and obviously the little helper is played by Tracy. I feel like the only reason Santa is played by Matt Bentley is so that the little helper can be played by Tracy. Yes. <laughs> Mike and Don are losing their minds over Tracy wearing her, like, it's not the schoolgirl outfit she wears, it's she's wearing like a, a, a little helper outfit of some sort. It's like a Mrs. Claus thing. Yeah, like, they're literally like cartoon coyote, like... A wooga steam pouring out there is banging the table with wolf whistling. <laughs> they are going mad over Tracy Brooks, and like she, they're like she brought the real gifts, implying her breasts. Her breasts are the real gifts, Liam. Oh, yeah. Like, like I, <laughs> you ever like wonder? It's like this is a work colleague. Mm. <laughs> Do you ever look at it through that lens? Yeah. <laughs> like I know they're filming a television show, but like this is your colleague. <laughs> That you have to go out the back and like eat catering with. <laughs> and you're like, oh, sorry about being like a wooga about you on TV, but you know how it is. And like, I mean, like, I'm sure Tracy doesn't care <laughs> at this point, but it's like, it's just like, it's not, I'm not, I'm not even like tut tutting it. I just, I think it's. It's just a funny thing to think about. Mm. So Kristen Cage interrupts Santa Claus. And he's like, I hope you got me all my presents, Santa Claus. He gets some white pants, just like Jeff Jarrett. He then spends a bizarrely long time uh, getting those pants on because they are very tight. And as he's pulling them up, he leans down and he is at chest height with Tracy Brooks and stares at her boobs. Hell yeah. That's my baby face, baby. (laughs) Christian also has a don't piss me off Jeff Jarrett shirt, the wig and the Jeff Jarrett (laughs) shirt. With the WWE logo on the back. It is it is a WWE licensed merchandise. Don't piss me off t-shirt. <laughs> they didn't even like cover up the, the logo. Presumably from Jeff Jarrett's personal collection of his own t-shirts. Well, they weren't selling it on WWEshop.com. Uh, the crowd chant double C as he is in full Jeff Jarrett outfit. Uh, Bentley Santa has things to do, which prompts a stuffer stocking chant from the crowd. Oh, that's creative at least. Before uh, giving Christian a tiny guitar. Which is the technical term for the instrument, I'm sure. A, a guitarcito? Ooh, that's cool. Yeah, we'll go with that. Um, Jarrett, Monty come out, brawl. Christian does a little strut and bails before, once again, JPEGs appear. Da, 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 da. It's so funny that they're just like a slideshow. It is just just like three different Scorpion JPEGs and they go, ooh, and they spin. <laughs> you, couldn't fi- you couldn't find like a B-roll of a Scorpion. <laughs> Or, like, they do shoot some B-roll of Sting for later in the month. So they do have some Sting footage on, like, the last two impacts. Well, we I get not wanting to actually show Sting, like, if that's the mm-hmm. bit. But, like, you can't just, like, get some B-roll of a scorpion running across the ground? Go to the local pet shop and actually get a, get a, a, get a scorpion? Yeah, you're in Florida. <laughs> I'm sure you can rent a scorpion. Put a scorpion on, like, the top of the ramp and zoom in on a live scorpion? That'd be sick. It's just, like, in a small little, like, case. Not even in a case, it's just Roman. Has Sting ever used a live scorpion? He's used a live crow once. Yeah, I'd say he's not opposed to the use of live animals. He's a fan of live birds more than live scorpion. Doesn't make sense. I guess birds are scarier than scorpions. Well, like, was it a, it's a crow, I guess. Like, if, if you don't see the scorpion coming, the scorpion is scarier, because it can sneak up on you and, like, bite you and sting you stuff. What's the biggest scorpion? But, like... If you do see a scorpion coming, it's quite small. You can run away from it quite easily. Nine inches. Still quite small. You could do like a Jake the Snake thing. 
It's big enough that if you saw it, you'd freak out. But it, it's not big enough that, uh, like, if you saw it, you'd be like, I'm trapped. Yeah, but, like, I'm sure there's, like, <laughs> that'd be a great segment. Especially in, like, the 2012 TNA era where it's, like, Mick Foley in his office and Singh just unleashes a garbage can full of scorpions <laughs> into the office. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you raise a good point. It would have to be multiple scorpions. It couldn't just be the one. <laughs> and, like, Foley, like, jumps up on the desk. <laughs> uh, I did see, I saw a fucking humongous fox last night. Mm-hmm. I was walking up a hill, and I just looked to my right, and there was, like, the largest, beefiest fox I've ever seen. And he didn't run away, he just looked at me. And I was like, what? That seems like that could be very, like, powerful moment. Mm. And, like, there's tons of foxes in that area, but they're usually, like, quite small, and they're quite skittish. And that boy mm. was fucking humongous! It looked like he ate two of the other foxes! Did you connect eyes and have a spiritual exchange? I was more like, look at the size of you! <laughs> <laughs> You're so big! It could have been your spirit animal, you could have gone on a journey of self-discovery. Um, sure. But to go back to my scorpions versus birds point. Uh, birds course. birds are scarier because they can chase you. A scorpion could chase me. Not very fast. <laughs> you don't know how fast I am or how fast I am not? I think you're faster than a nine inch scorpion. All right, let's set it up. Foot race. <laughs> you versus scorpion. Yeah. Um, I think I could beat any scorpion in a fight. Yeah, but I think most humans could beat it. Uh, again, unless the scorpion had an element of stealth and could get you from behind, I think most humans could beat a scorpion in a fight. Whereas I would not fancy my chances against every bird. Okay, um, uh, here's my 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 battlefield with you, right? Mm-hmm. It's you versus scorpion. Yeah. Largest scorpion possible, nine inches, two ounces. You're in a room that's about five by five meters. Mm. No door, nothing else in there. And you don't have shoes. Ooh, that's interesting. I'd, I'd like backsplash it. <laughs> a, just take a big bump onto it? Yeah, big like the big Samoa Joe backsplash. I'm not sure that would kill it. It would certainly wound it. Yeah, but like I feel like you would land on it and it would sting you. I don't think it would be able to. I think I would crush it too much. No, I, I, th- I don't think you would. But if you do the Samoa Joe where you bounce off pretty quick, you would do at least enough damage. To you that- think you can bounce off pretty quick? <laughs> Listen, Samoa Joe's a bigger man than I am. So if he can do it, I can do it. I don't know. I, I, I think the only, the only reason we think we have the advantage over such a large scorpion is due to the prevalence of shoes. And I think in a shoeless environment, we are we are on the back foot, so to speak. Mm. I wouldn't even take on like a two inch spider without shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to touch it. <laughs> is it literally just like the texture of the spider would freak you out? No, I don't like the idea of even touching it. Mm. I need a weapon. Like <laughs> I need something to, to to use to my advantage. I can't have. I couldn't go. I couldn't like fist fight a spider. <laughs> no, you wouldn't have to. I, I would be fearful. You could just flick it. I guess, but like, if it's like two inches, that's a big, you gotta put some force into that. And like, it'll be looking at you the whole time and you gotta like try and like, because you can't flick it in the face because then it could bite you. It does have many eyes. Exactly. So like, you have to catch it from the side and then like the whole time you're gonna be fearful that it's gonna like spring out. Mm. I'm just saying the logistics of fighting a, a scorpion or a spider are not as favorable as we may think without the prevalence of sh- feed protection. But do you think still think it's worse than a bird? Yeah. I'll punch a bird. <laughs> Why would you punch a bird but you'd freak uh, out about a spider? I, 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 birds don't scare me. <laughs> That's interesting. I, I, like, I, like, I, like, I'm assuming in my head it's a crow. Mm. Uh, crow, by the way, my favorite bird. Mm. So I would feel devastated about having to be in this uh, environment. But you put me in a 5x5 five five room with a bird? With a crow? I'll, 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 I'll fucking, I'll throw hands. But a scorpion, nah, we got, like that, that's got too many defensive mechanisms. Birds have like beaks and wings; they'll freak yeah, out on you. Yeah, but I'm just gonna sock it in the face. Why can't you do that to the scorpion? Because the scorpion has armor <laughs> <laughs> and has a stinger that can catch me on the way through. Like what? Okay, so what? Boom! The 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 bird pecks me, grabs on. Boom! Then it's then it's trapped. Then I've got it trapped, and it's just bang, 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 bang. Like, that's easy. <laughs> what do you think happens with this? Do you think it goes for, like, four different, like, the, the, the precision stings? It stings you once it hangs on, and you can go bang, 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 bang. Yeah, but gone. then I'm dead. The, then I'm paralyzed and dead. Scorpions are not one-hit KO here. I think they are. I think anything that it has toxin is a one-hit KO. Okay. <laughs> I, would, I would forever take the immediate pain mm-hmm. of a peck or a claw... 
over the one to two day process of expelling toxin from from my body. <laughs> Birds can give you disease too. Yeah, but it's dead. It's like you know, I'm fucking I'm left right. Good night, you know. <laughs> This is a fascinating exchange. It comes, it flies at me, boom, V trigger. Why can't you, why can't you use your knee on the scorpion? How am I going to knee a scorpion on the floor? You literally just drop one. Oh, and break my knee. What do you think you're doing? I'm not Togi Markabe here. (laughs) I don't have the King Kong knee drop. Oh dear. And again, I'm going down on the knee and it's just, it's getting me with a stinger. Mm. Ridiculous. I will, I I'll take on a bird any time over something small and venomous. <laughs> the main event of the December 24th Impact was Christian Cage against the Wildcat Chris Harris. Uh, under the assumption that I don't have uh, a shoe. Mm. Or then it if I have a shoe, I'm, I'm taking on an, a, an arachnid any day. Uh, Storm immediately tries to interfere but gets ejected. Gale's at ringside to help Harris though. Harris tries to use cuffs but Christian reverses into a DDT. Storm runs out, hits Christian with the tag title. Rudy finds the tag title but doesn't know what happened. Christian kicked out. Uh, Christian throws Harris into Storm's crotch, hits the unprettier for the win. Jarrett jumps Christian after the match. Christian looks the bail but Monty jumps him from behind. They destroy Christian and the JPEGs do absolutely nothing to help here. <laughs> Monty nearly pounces Christian into Gale. The Gale's standing in the corner and Monty pounces him and Gale has to literally leap out of the way of Christian Cage's body as he has pounced right at her. Awesome. Uh, and then Jared falls with a stroke on the title belt as they pose over Christian Cage's dead body. Yeah, like, do you think if in a post-match beatdown scenario, mm. if the JPEGs just started playing, they would stop? They would get very startled by the JPEGs as illustrated by past experience. Mm. That is wrestling logic. Every time those JPEGs appear, they are like, what the hell? Uh, yeah. New Year's Eve, December 31st Impact. There is two Impacts that day, as we talked about. There is the, the regular God. Impact in uh, on, on, I think it's in primetime, so it was 8pm. And then later that night at midnight is the special primetime special. So they're teasing a big announcement throughout the show that there will be this huge announcement made at the primetime special. Um, but on the Impact earlier that night, it is Monty Brown and Jeff Jarrett versus the tremendous team of Shark Boy and Kenny King. All right, let's think of a pun. Shark King. I know, like sharking was immediately the, like the thing. Mm. Like, like in poker, the sharking. Yeah. <laughs> well, that could be King Shark. King Shark. Do 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 King Shark. All right, you ready for this? Right. This is my pitch for their name. The shark boy who would be king. You know what? Perfect. Yep. Jackie Gator shouts at Jeff Jarrett during his entrance and then threw a slap, but missed. Uh, Sharky bites Jarrett in the ass. The crowd chants, Shark Boy's gonna kill you. <laughs> the crowd would probably be pretty happy if Shark Boy beat Jarrett for the belt. Uh, uh, wouldn't we all? Uh, pounce the king, stroke to Shark Boy as Jarrett and Monty win. Sting's music hits, the scorpion looms. It looms like it were in a 5x5 five five room with you and you weren't wearing <laughs> shoes. Investigative journalist Don West is like, I want to know what's the deal with this Jackie Gate of nonsense. So he goes backstage, finds Jackie as she's been kicked out. Jackie denies it being a lover's quarrel and says that Jarrett didn't keep her word. Jackie explains the situation that she gave up a career to accept Jarrett's job offer, but then she saw Gail Kim showing up on TV instead. But she has a secret and demands Jarrett gives her the money he promised her or she will reveal his secret. And everyone is on the the edge of their seats waiting for this reveal. Mm. Main event of that episode of Impact is the Cowboy James Storm versus Jeff. Jarrett. Uh, the important part for this story is uh, after the match there's a bunch of run-ins and saves and stuff and then Christian makes the ultimate save and then says come back at midnight for our big announcement. We'll talk about the match itself when we're talking about the t- X division? <laughs> or tag division. Uh, which brings yes. us... Yes. <laughs> which brings us to the first episode of Impact of 2006. Literally, as the clock strikes midnight, Christian Cage counts us down. There's a fun note about this. The idea was Christian was supposed to do a 10 second promo and the clock would pretend there was 20 seconds left in the year and he'd count down 10, 9, 8, so, uh, so on and so forth. Anyway, he forgot, he, he twice forgot his 10 second promo and started counting down anyway and got to zero with 10 seconds left on the clock. This led to a loud you fucked up chant. He he made a remark, what do you want? I'm, I'm Canadian. Because apparently Canadians can't count to 10 on the new year. Well, they can count to 10, they can't count down from 10. 
That's true. And they can't leave a, a 10 second gap until they start counting. That's just too much information to process. Yeah. But we do get the, the groundbreaking announcement that Mike Tanae makes it official that Sting is the newest member of the TNA roster. And Christian's like, whoa, 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 Mike. I got some more news. And Mike's like, you one up in me? And I'm like, I'm one up in you. He announces that the main event of Final Resolution will be him and Sting versus Monty Brown and Jeff Jarrett. Jarrett comes out, crowd chant boring again, as Jarrett does the same promo <laughs> over and over again. Like, every time he comes out, the crowd chant boring. It's so funny. Uh, Christian challenged Jarrett to fight him there and then. Jarrett takes great offense to being called slap nuts, even though there's, there's literally a shirt. Uh, Monty runs out, Rhino makes the save, AMW runs out, 3D makes the save, brawl. Nice. Uh, what do we got here? Nothing, 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 nothing. <laughs> Me watching a TNA show. <laughs> <laughs> the January 7th show ends with Jeff Jarrett doing his personal tribute to Sting. Because through this show, there's a bunch of video packages. I think there's Chris Saban, Sanjay Dodd, a couple others. Uh, Christian as well, talking about like little talking head spots about what Sting means to them. Some of them said basically nothing. And the fans. And the fans. There was some fans. that They loved the, the Scorpion Death Drop and the uh, Scorpion Death Lock and the Stinger Splash. They're all great moves, to be fair. Great move names as well. Yeah. Uh, but here, Jared is like, we've had all those tributes to Sting throughout the show. I have mine. This is some classic TNA comedy right here. Mm. Eric Young comes out as Surfer Sting. Uh, right. Chris Harris comes out as Crow Sting, which is actually fun because Harris actually played a fake Sting at Halloween Havoc 2000. Wow. Well, he looks the part. He does. You do look at it. It's like, that is that is a good Crow Sting. And I get why they used you as a fake Sting in WCW. And then he had Sting's actual music. <laughs> yeah, it is funny. Like, anytime there's a tease of Sting this month, they play the, the TNA Sting theme. You know, whenever the JPEGs appear, the TNA Sting theme appears. Can you please recreate it right now? I can't. It's a weird song. Come on, do it. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm, I'm literally trying to like form the sounds in my head, and I can't. For some reason, I keep going back to Rhino song. Content for the people. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, 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 for some reason, I drift toward rhinos. <laughs> when you do it like that, it, it, it drifts towards rhino. It upsets me. I know. That's why it's funny. Uh, there is a chicken in a chicken suit uh, playing a crow. <laughs> Because mm -hmm. I guess they couldn't find a crow suit. Or maybe they're calling him a chicken. And Mike Tanay has to fill in that gap. Because one, he explains it's James Storm that's in the suit. And the other, he's like, Ch a chicken? I guess that's meant to be a crow. <laughs> uh, and then the highlight for me, personally. We had Surfer Sting. We had Crow Sting. But Monty Brown comes out as real estate Steve. <laughs> Which is like, like, it's something that we get with the context of having seen certain Alex Shelley promos and such. Mm. But it's like, like, how many people knew this? Yeah, he comes out like wearing a visor, wearing a polo shirt, wearing some uh, tight shorts. He's doing white face. <laughs> Listen, they're all doing sting face. Wow. Uh, he, he comes out with a, a buggy or a stroller if you're in, in, in America. Uh, the or the idea Australia. that, that, that uh, do you call it a stroller there too? Yeah. Eh, it's a buggy here. That's lame. Mm. It's so stupid. Oh, because stroller is such a wonderful yeah, word. Yeah, stroller's awesome. Tell you what, I could kill a crow with a stroller. Could you kill a scorpion with one, though? Yes. Any weapon. Give me any weapon. What if you had, like, a pencil? You know, I'd feel more confident. Mm. Yeah. Because then I could, like, pin down the tail and punch it to death. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you couldn't do that with your fingers? No, because then my fingers are in striking distance. They're still in striking distance, even if you have a pencil. <laughs> Or I could get it to, like, get its claws on the pencil and, like, then it's distracted. So the idea is Monty is <laughs> domesticated Sting. I'm, I'm not going to beat any animals to death. I feel like I should clarify. I mm. never would. I love animals too much. If anyone would do it, it's Garrett because he has a callous relationship with animals. They're evil monsters. That fox wanted to get me. No, he was your spirit animal trying to guide you. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Mon Monty is, like, old man Sting, retired Sting. He's no longer a wrestler Sting. Um, he starts speaking to the baby in Monty Brown voice. 
Mm-hmm. So he's like, go, 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 Sting! Monty. Sting is a Pokemon. He is. only uses his name. Jarrett mentions that Sting no longer listens to Toby Keith, but Carrie Underwood, which I think he's traded ah, up, frankly. fucking owned. Uh, Monty says, that's how we stroll, as he strolls the stroller, because it's Christmas catchphrase. Mike Tanae explains that joke. <laughs> he's like, you want to see how we roll, not how we stroll. <laughs> Christian comes out and says they look stupid to which Monty responds this is entertainment we've looked at the statistics and this is what the fans want (laughs) yeah we've done a a controlled focus group where we we, uh, the the match before this was Austin Aries Roger Strong and Alex Shelley versus AJ Styles Christopher Daniels and Chris Saban so they were like Mm -hmm. do these people want this X division action or do they want these antics and and skits to be fair, if the AEW antics and skits were this good, I'd be into it. That that is like the biggest thing that I think people miss in like talking about the the like the, the last six months of AEW, where they're like it, they they present it very rigidly as sports entertainment versus pro wrestling, which it kind of is. But they miss the bigger issue in that like it's it's bad. bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's just bad. Like, it's not that you cannot do a good version of Timeless Tony Storm. It's that the version of Timeless Tony Storm they're doing is a bad one note act. Yeah. But here you have Monty Brown dressed as Old Man Sting making baby noises. Yeah, if they committed like half as hard to that character as they do to this, mm. it'd be great. So, uh, Kristen and 3D come out, clear a house they have everybody but the chicken, and they throw the chicken out of the way- ring, but Abyss appears, Abyss and Rhino brawl, but Abyss gets dropped to the gore. Classic uh, Abyss. Jeff Jarrett's tribute to Sting, which aired on this episode, was heavily edited after airing. <laughs> the, the tribute was kept as the final segment of the show, but just lasted just over five minutes. A chance of boring greeted Jarrett as soon as he began the tribute. However, other derogatory chants were edited out as approximately 75% of the segment was chopped out. TNA social media team, release the full (laughs) cut. Release the Monty Brown cut. Release it. I want to see all the versions of Sting. Do it. I wonder, do we have that tape? Probably don't. We have to get into contact with the people in the know. We have to find the people who were in the building that day and, and rebuild it from their memories using some sci-fi technology. Yes, we'll AI the segment. <laughs> out of their brain and <laughs> into real life. God, we n- we should never take things out of wrestling fans' brains and bring them into real life. No, you would get some monstrous things. Some things you could not defeat in a 5x5 five five room. Well, if I'd choose. <laughs> the Go Home Show, January 14th. We were Reveal our, our end of year awards on this show. There, there are only one related to. We don't the reveal ours. Well, no, we don't reveal ours. Ours will be on Patreon in the next couple of weeks. Uh, who to watch in 2006 went to Christian Cage. Okay. Great. <laughs> when we do that award now, which, by the way, most of the award categories we do now are actually based on these when I put them back together. We started doing, doing awards in 2018. I started doing most of these awards. I think Finisher has been dropped since. Um, but these are the, the award categories that I was like, we need to carry these forward. So that's if you're ever wondering why it's specifically X Division Star of the Year, that's what it was in these set of awards. Mm. That same award went to Mike Bailey last night as we record this, but... Yeah, please give the, the 2023 versions of these awards. Uh, Knockout of the Year went to Jackie Gaeta. In 2023, it went to Trinity. Um, finisher of the Year went to the Canadian Destroyer. We don't run that one anymore. Who, Who would you give it to in 2023? Who would get the the uh, Impact Finisher of the Year? Maybe like ABC? I like the one two sweet as a finish. Mm-hmm. The Bailey move. Uh, Ultimate Weapon the is always a good weapon. one. Yeah. Um, so who to watch in 2006 went to Christian Cage. 2023 went to Kylan King. Fun fact, she won by one mm. vote. Did you vote in these awards, Garrett? Um, no. Mm. I'm unbiased. She beat Jake that something was a suspicious by... no. She beat Jake something by a single vote. So every vote matters. Tag Team of the Year went to Team 3D. It went to ABC in 2023. Memorable Moment of the Year went to Christian's debut. It went to the announcement of the return of TNA in 2023. Uh, Exhibition Star of the Year, AJ, Mike Bailey in 2023. Food of the Year, we don't run. And Match of the Year went to Bardwire Massacre here and went to Will Ospreay versus Mike Bailey in 2023. So there you go. Hmm. Who was Mr. TNA? Alex Shelley, I guess. It was Male Wrestler of the Year, we call that now. But There you go. Uh, so Franchise has Jackie Gaeta asks her about the letter. She delivered a letter to Jeff Jarrett last week being like these are my secrets i have secrets jackie says this is between her and jared the letter lists her demands demore walks up and pitches working together it's like we can't make these demands come on she's like meet my demands demore has such a weird energy in these segments lately 
He's, he's trying to talk down Jackie Gator. But like, even in the segments without, like, he looks, he's, he feels like browbeaten. <laughs> he's, he doesn't like doing Jarrett's dirty work, you see. I guess. He normally loves doing Jarrett's dirty work. He's very worried about what Jackie Gator could have. Yeah, that makes sense. But Because like, they're not, it's never actually revealed, which is the big thing, what the Jackie Gator, it's very obvious what she has. The idea is she has proof of what happened with Controversy in Canada. Like, she, ha- she has like the paper trail of what happened there. But so, we all know that's what happened. But but like, like the idea that like TNA management was in on it, which is the reason Larry Z was like so vehemently against Jackie Gator as well. She's he's trying to kick her out of the building at every turn. The idea is like she has the proof of like the actual collusion that led to Jeff Jarrett winning and Raven losing. I think that that's like what they were going for here. They never actually reveal it because Jackie Gator just disappears eventually. We have to use our contacts and find out. Coming soon to the Patreon scoops. What was Jackie Gator threatening Jeff Jarrett with? It was that. Though it was that. It's, they're not like Shut subtle up. about We're it. We're gonna sell Patreons. <laughs> it was very clearly that, but it, it, that's the reason Demore is very worried about it as well as Jarrett. Rents do, goddamn it. <laughs> There's a sit-down interview with Jarrett and Monty. Same stuff. They're not scared of staying conspiracy. Main event of that episode is Rhino and Christian Cage versus America's Most Wanted. This sounds cool. It was a pretty good TV main. I like AMW had two TV matches this month. I thought both of them were pretty good. Mm. And the finish of the pay-per-view match is hilarious. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris Harris briefly turns into Kurt Angle and hits like a full overhead belly to belly to Christian to the floor I'm like Where, where's that Chris Harris been? I don't know he's been busy being Sting I guess uh, Christian goes for the unprettier but Gale kicks him in the balls Christian kicks out uh, 3D run out and uh, deal with Gale 3D neckbreaker Harris Rhino gore storm Christian frog splashes Harris for the win Monty and Abyss run out crowd chants we want Sting Monty pounces Christian Jared hits him with the guitar but the JPEGs appear this time we hear from Sting Sting's voice Voice appears as he calls Jarrett the queen of the hill and Monty the alpha female. Ah. Ah. And then says it's showtime at final resolution. So, you get it because he called them women. He did call them women. He really put them down. Ah. Sting's first TNA words after being signed were sexist. <laughs> Prefer the JPEGs. Yeah, the JPEGs never were problematic. Yeah, they were, they were wholesome. That brings us to the pay-per-view. So there are two backstage promos, one from Jarrett, one from Christian. And Jarrett Monty's one basically is like, that Christian guy, awful habit of turning on people, doesn't he? Yeah, he's not a good partner. Yeah, he turned on Edge, turned on Chris Jericho. Huh, can you trust that guy? Do you think you can trust that guy? And then Christian does a backstage promo being like, Hey, you, you can trust me. We all hate Monty <laughs> and Jarrett, you can trust me. <laughs> so that does bring us to the main event, which is the return of Sting as a full-timer to a wrestling company for the first time in five years. Obviously, he did some dates in both WWA and TNA in between. But this is the return of Sting as a full-timer as he teams with Christian Cage to face Jeff Jarrett and Monty Brown. I mean, it's it's definitely cool to see Sting here. He is a star, he is a name, and, you know... Crowd's into it, everyone's into it, I'm into it. Good stuff to have Sting here. And also, you know, the beginning of the run that is the thing I associate with Sting the most ever. Yeah, TNA guy to you. Yeah, to me. Full, fully TNA guy. I hope at uh, his retirement match he comes out to his TNA music. Or they do like the Great Muda thing where they do like the history of TNA, or the history of Sting themes and they include the TNA yes, theme. Yes, that is such a great, that's such a great idea. Like, what a perfect way for like a giant star like that. Mm. And the thing is, you've already done the Metallica thing. So it's like... You gotta one up it somehow. And yeah, I, I like I like that. That was so cool. For and I love like hearing the pops for the the more recognizable themes. Yeah, I liked uh, that they could they play. They're like, all right, nine seconds of final countdown. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to either go broke. I don't think they licensed it. Or uh, if it's like we want we want it to fall as as within fair use as we possibly can. It was uh, a lot shorter than the rest of them. <laughs> it was like da 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 da. Uh, so Sting comes out to, as we said he doesn't come out to the TNA Sting theme he comes out to this weird like fake down with a sickness song <laughs> it's very bad have he shot at Monty Brown who uh, also uses that fake down with the sickness song that's true yeah this, this dumb boring butt rock song was the Sting theme I was like nope that's not the Sting theme I don't think he ever uses that again either I think they were very much like oh that didn't work <laughs> yeah um, I thought Sting looked great like because I think he's something like 48 here he's late 40s anyway and I thought he looked like he looked really good he looked in good shape he uh, he has the advantage of having face paint so he doesn't look old which i think is why, why every wrestler should have face paint so you can wrestle until you're 63 and you don't look old yeah uh, it's funny like he got in the ring he, he like uh, hit a hip toss hit a drop kick and then he got the you still got a chance which 
like people can correct me if I'm mistaken. I think this is the origin of the You Still Gotta chant. Yeah. I mean, like, unless there was like some WWE legend thing. I don't think there was. I think this is the first time there was a You Still Gotta chant, which is like fucking WWE chants just chanted it for France, just chanted it for CM Punk. <laughs> which is hilarious. <laughs> it's a very, very, very good bit. I was like, uh, like uh, 50% of that um, MSG crowd not even knowing that he wrestled this year. <laughs> There, I was watching a Drew McIntyre like the t- promo on Twitter, and he, yeah. he did a good bit where he's like, "CM Punk looked pretty good for his first match in ten years," and then gave like a little knowing glance at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, trying to you still got it for CM Punk is, is a good bit. Like th- there is like, I re- was it when Jay- wrestled in front of eighty thousand people this year? <laughs> yeah, when Jay Lethal left TNA and went back to Ring of Honor. <laughs> In 2011, yeah, he got you still got a chance. <laughs> that's a good one because that's a passive aggressive one. <laughs> it is there, there, there is that is a, a loaded you still got a chant, but it is funny how that chant has evolved because like it, it does make sense here. Like Sting hasn't been on TV regularly for five yeah. years, like and he is old, so like it is like yeah, hell yeah, you still got it. I, I do like uh, how Don mentions on commentary how Sting wanted to come back so he could go out in his own terms in 2024. <laughs> after cutting the same promo with the same point in AEW. Yeah, 18 years later, after this <laughs> return match, Sting is finally retired. And it's going to be Christian Cage and Sting versus Jeff Jarrett and Monty Brown. That match would be awesome. <laughs> they do have three-fourths of it. And Monty should win. <laughs> Uh, so like yeah, they they build that story that we were talking about into the match that that there's dissension between these two or they they not necessarily dissension but can they trust each other so they're they're all, they're all ha- fine happy getting along for most of it Christian hits some stinger splashes but Gale's distraction allows Jared to get the heat on Jared or Christian after a low blow Gale also hits an awesome hurricane runner off the apron on Christian it's nice when Gale gets to actually wrestle and not just shout at Jeff Jarrett backstage. <laughs> Yeah, because she's very good. Uh, Sting gets the hot tag, hits some stinger splashes, ref gets bumped. Sting gets a phantom submission on Jarrett with the scorpion deathlock. Uh, Christian saves Sting from a Monty belt shot. Uh, Sting picks up the belt and then backs into Christian. And then they're like, whoa, are you going to hit me? You going to hit me, bro? You going to hit me with that belt? Uh, He doesn't. Team Canada run out, but Sting and Christian took them out with their respective reverses DDTs. The scorpion death drop and and Christian's like fallout reverse DDT. Sting's just better. I kind of like Christian's. (laughs) I mean, Christian's is, like, good, but, like, Sting's mm. is better. Uh, Jarrett got a belt shot, but Sting kicked out. I just, can I, re- I remembered something, mm-hmm. like, from my backyard wrestling days. Okay. Um, The first bump I ever took in a ring was after taking a Stinger splash, and then I went out and did the flare face bump. Uh-huh. Not really, not ever having taken a bump in a ring before. <laughs> fucking hurt so bad yeah like face first bumps aren't pleasant even when you know what you're doing knocked the complete wind out of my like <laughs> like i mean looked good let's be real mm. but hurt <laughs> like a son of a bitch i like the way you're like looked like a million bucks i was a pro but yeah 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 because yeah. like i i get <laughs> because at that point i you don't know how much it hurts mm. the first time you take it so i just threw my whole body like, i fully like kicked my legs out <laughs> like as like so it was as like powerful as possible and i fucking died oh you were like full like the the way eric young would take that bump yeah like that's exactly like full swing my leg forward and back to get as much momentum <laughs> as possible in it <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, I think I took it about 75% right, mm. <laughs> but 25% of it was not right, and that was enough to fuck me up. Mm. I think that's the story of your backyard career. Yeah, pretty much. Jared tried to use a guitar, but Sting smashed it with a baseball bat, bat shot to the gut, scorpion death drop. Sting pins Jared, which is interesting. He couldn't talk his way out of that one. What's more interesting is like Sting got a visual submission on Jared in the match too, which you would have thought was Jared's excuse for not losing. It's like, I'll, I'll give him a, a, a visual submission and Monty can take the fall. But Jared takes the fall too. I think even Jared knows... <laughs> Yeah, and they do have to set up Sting and Jarrett as the match. And I think Jarrett knows that if he sets that up as the match, he has to be champion for the year and he gets to have the big match with Sting. Yeah. So it is a thing that seems on its surface generous, but in truth is actually also selfish because Jarrett knows then it kind of has to be him and Sting. Perfect. The greatest worker of all time. Legitimately, Monty Brown working with Sting is a big deal, as when Brown was growing up, he had photos of Sting on his wall as one of his big sports heroes, as Brown was a bigger wrestling fan growing up than he was a football fan. When he played in the 1994 Super Bowl game as a member of the Buffalo Bills at the Georgia Dome, during that week he made sure to go to Main Event Fitness because he wanted to meet Sting. That's so 
so sweet. Even as like a man about to play in a Super Bowl, he's still like, can I meet Sting? I want to meet Sting. <laughs> That's what a, what a, he's a little stinger. He is a little stinger. So Monty working with Sting is probably a, a highlight of his career. All right, Gary, I'm going to propose a question to you. Go for it. Five by five room. Mm-hmm. You and Sting. I, uh, what era Sting we talking about? Modern day. But you don't have shoes. <laughs> I could take Sting. You could take Sting? I think Sting is one of those guys who I'm like, even Prime Sting, I'm pretty confident I could take Sting. You could not take Prime Sting. You could take down Sting. All show, no He's go. He's like three times as big as you. <laughs> yeah, he has muscles, but all show, no go. I could take Sting. You could take Sting? He doesn't strike me as a fighter, you see. He gets the bat. Oh, yeah, but he kicked my ass if he has a bat. Modern day, but he gets the bat. It's probably too slow I could take him. Mm. But, like, really, like Sting is one of those guys who's, like, he doesn't strike me as, like, and then he's, I don't think he's ever projected himself as a guy who, who's actually tough, because I don't think he is. Yeah. All right, everyone, bring that out to the to the sheets. Garrett does not think Sting is tough ever. I could beat him in a fight. I could kick his ass. All right. Don't back down. Double down. All right, let's head on. Think I, you could probably double leg take down him when he's, like, young. Yeah. Too top heavy. He's too muscular. He's he's all muscle. He's a bodybuilder. Bodybuilders, can you mm. can kick, like, I, I'm not a fighter, but I think I could take down most bodybuilders. Mm. But he's, like, an athletic bodybuilder. Still a bodybuilder, though. Mm. Open challenge been uh, thrown out there by Garrett. Me versus any bodybuilder. Yeah. 